Hello, so this video today is going to focus on what your child can do to revise effectively over the next few months and also what you can do to support them with that. So students throughout years 9, 10, 11 have had various sessions uh, with me looking at revision and how how they can revise effectively. So hopefully they've already got a good understanding of what it is they should, they should be doing, but we wanted to share that with you as well as parents and carers, so you're aware of the sorts of uh, techniques and advice that they've been given. Um, so lots of the science and re research shows that revision should be something that's done over a period of time. Um, so the idea of cramming before an exam is shown to be quite ineffective and actually spacing learning over a period of time ensures that it stays in students' long term memory um, much more effectively. So hopefully students have already started that revision process um, and have been doing that throughout year 11, particularly in preparation for their practice exams. But if they haven't, um, it's, that's absolutely fine and there's still lots of time to, to have an impact for their revision to have an impact. But we wanted to share with you the idea of, of how that could be done to try and keep as much momentum going as possible. Um, and so for that, we've kind of um, come up with this idea of don't break the chain. And it's something that we've used effectively before with students over um, over the last um, sort of five years or so in terms of helping them to keep the momentum going for their exam. So if students were to revise um, or do kind of a revisiting cycle every day um, for one hour, um, over the next two months, which is the time between now and their exams, they would have completed 60 hours of revision. So we would suggest that a revision cycle or a revisiting cycle lasts for about 30 minutes. Um, and I'll go through with you later on about why we feel that 30 minutes is the optimum time for students to revise. So if they were to complete two of those revisiting cycles or two revision um, sessions every day, for, so for one hour, between now and their first exam, they will have completed 60 hours of revision. Um, so their first exam is on the 16th of May. Um, if you were to start, if they were to start this on the 14th of March, between now and that first exam, they would have completed 60 hours. Ideally, we would like them to revise for a little bit more than one hour a day, so maybe an hour and a half, and then obviously that would give them even more revision that they would have completed. So the idea is to try and keep that chain going. So just start that revision and to keep it going as they go through um, the next two months. So if, if they use a calendar such as this, every time they complete one revision cycle, they put a line through the box. And when they complete two um, revisiting cycles within a day, they put a cross in the box. And then they can kind of see that that momentum that they're managing to keep that revision going and it's going through a period of time. And we found that this has been really effective in, in terms of students keeping their momentum going because they can see the progress they're making and how much revision they're, they're, they're completing. Um, and um, one way to kind of think about their revision to have the most amount of impact is the idea of actually what changes do they want to make? So initially, making that kind of diagnosis of their, the key subjects and the key topics within their subjects that they feel um, they, they need to work on. Using revision checklists to see what's, what they're securing and what they still need to do some work on. And some revision checklists and booklets will be going out shortly um, and be, putting, be put on Google Classroom for students to refer to. Then using those revision checklists to identify key learning and gaps that need filling in their knowledge. Completing retrieval activities to strengthen their memory skills and ensure that their knowledge is secure. Um, but also that support then from parents to check that that chain isn't broken and that learning is happening. And then using that to kind of test each other by, by writing and completing test questions um, and then doing uh, exam questions and essay questions. And that kind of cycle um, of how they can revise and the impact it can have over the next eight weeks can be really powerful. Um, so I wanted to share with you some really kind of key revision tips that I've shared with students over this last year. Um, 
And the kind of these are the things that, that really will have an impact. So the idea of kind of spacing study sessions out as much as possible. So as I said, that idea of kind of cramming before an exam is not particularly effective, but actually spacing them out as much as possible um, over the next two, three months. Trying to revise under exam conditions is also is also really important. So trying to make sure there's no distractions, no phone, no music, um, and really kind of putting themselves in that situation where it, their revision sessions are as close to exam conditions as possible. It's also important to try and switch between ideas in a in a revision session, um, so that they're not kind of studying one thing for too long, but they're actually kind of moving between topics and skills um, to to strengthen their understanding. Um, and the idea of retrieval as well is really important when they're studying, so testing themselves whilst they're learning. And also then using the idea of different memory te te techniques, such as mnemonics, memory palace, uh, mind maps, and elaboration, which are all ideas that I've shared with students over the course of this year. Um, and one thing um, that I've shared with students that they've um, found quite effective is the idea of thinking about it, the, um, what their revision is, is like and whether it's what we call flat revision. So revision should try to be these four things every single time. So it should be focused, long-term, active and transformed. So the idea of fo uh, focus, so putting their phone away, turning music off, avoiding distractions, being in the right physical place to revise and the right frame of mind to revise. Um, long-term, so as I, did, as I said, starting um their revision over a period of time so hopefully they have started it in kind of january time with that with their practice exams but if they haven't there's still time for them to to really make an impact on their revision and their um and their attainment um students have had um some revision sessions with me looking at how to create a revision timetable and they can use some of the templates to help them um create that timetable and then stick to it and then the idea of revision being active, so actively creating resources, testing yourself, using practicing exam technique, um, but also then transforming their knowledge into a different format. So various ideas there of different things they can do to ensure that their revision is transformed revision. So just um, just as I talked about the idea of um, what they should do before they start revising so setting up a revision space knowing what they're going to revise um but also kind of that idea of not spending too long on a topic but using a revision timetable to help them um one thing that can also be useful in terms of their revision is the idea of uh, dividing it up so the idea of dividing it into study tests and then teach someone else um, so as I said, the optimum amount of time that a student should be revising for is about kind of a 25 or 30 minute chunk. Any more than that, and actually their mind starts to wander and their revision isn't as focused and won't have such a big impact. And within that 30 minute chunk, I would suggest it's divided up into these kind of three sections. So the idea is for sort of five, five minutes or so to kind of study. So using their flashcards, their notes, their mind map to kind of study the material that they're trying, trying to learn then the main focus of their time should really be around the idea of testing themselves. So practicing the skill that they're tested on, using things like essay questions, exam style questions, past papers. And then the final bit of their revision should be the idea of teaching someone else. Now, this doesn't actually have to be te uh, teaching it to somebody um, that's kind of physically there, but actually that idea of could they explain this, what they've been learning to someone else? If, if one of their classmates was there with them, could they teach it to somebody else? Um, and that's really been found to help aid memory and recall because it allows them to kind of think about actually how to structure what it is they've been learning and organise their knowledge in a kind of really structured way. Um, and if they're not that confident on, on teaching someone else, it's absolutely fine, but it just means that they need to try and come back to it at a later date. Um, and I also thought it would it could be useful to share with you various uh, revision activities that students should do. So trying to ensure that their revision is active revision and is focusing on the idea of retrieval rather than recognition. And here are kind of a range of 
retrieval activities that students can use for their revision. Now, it might be that some of them work, that they prefer some of these revision activities uh, to others, and that's obviously absolutely fine, but just making sure um, that they know what works for them and having a range of revision activities that they can use that, that helps them. Um, there, there is a, a PowerPoint on Google Classrooms, which um, goes through all of these revision activities and it's on um, the Year 11 page on Google Classrooms. So students can go onto that and they can have a look at some of these revision, uh, revision techniques in more detail if they want to. And then finally, um, what, what they should do before they finish revising is the idea of kind of evaluating actually how confident they felt on what they've been learning. Um, and if they don't feel confident, on it, that's absolutely fine. But it just means that they should sort of try to um, kind of make a note on their revision title, know what they're going to do in that next revision session to help support them with that. Um, and I just wanted to kind of finish with um, a couple of sort of really key things for students to remember when they're revising. So this is something I've shared with year 11s before, um, and I think it's really important in terms of keeping it in mind when they're completing revision. So if students read through their revision notes, they're going to remember about 10% of it, um, which is not going to have a huge amount of impact. But if they are completing exercises and they're kind of saying and doing their revision, um, they're going to remember about 90%. Um, and that's that's a re that's obviously a huge difference. And it's just really important for students to kind of keep that in mind, that reading through their notes will not have the impact that they want it to have, but actually they should be trying to complete activities that allows them to actually kind of vocalise and write down their revision. And that idea of kind of retrieval in terms of their revision is absolutely key. Um, and I shared this with you earlier on um, in this video, but I just wanted to kind of finish with this um, with this kind of image, because I think this is the thing that's really kind of key in terms of students ensuring that their revision is going to have an impact. Um, obviously, all we want is for students to be as successful as they possibly can be in their summer exams. And these different Kind of techniques and strategies that I've talked um, talked to um, you three in this video are the things that will have an impact, um, and it's about making sure that when students spend that time revising, that it's going to have an impact on their progress and their attainment. I will be continuing to support Year 11s with their revision throughout the rest of this academic year. But if there are, if you um, would like any extra, if any students would like any extra support or advice, then I'm more than happy to, to meet with them individually and give them some help and guidance. So please just feel free to contact me at the school if that's something uh, you would like some help with.